we are. There's an official time check. We're coming up on eight minutes early. So that's the name of that tune. So we got a little bit of time to let the uh, trolls get in here and let the wrench gang get in here to do battle with them. A lot of trolls around lately. A lot of trollish comments. And we're going we're gonna to comment on that too. So meanwhile, I'm pulling it up on the iPad here just to, so I can keep an eye on things. So there we go. And we'll mute that. And we can keep an eye on things. That's what we like to do. We like to keep an eye on things. They keep trying to sell me stuff on Google. Why do they keep trying to sell me stuff? Our Wags is in the house. James is in the house. And our Wags, why do they keep trying to loan me money? They know I, do, I never borrow money, right? But every time I log on to my PayPal account, they're trying to loan me money. Every time I turn around, these people are trying to loan me money. And I don't borrow money. What, what gives with that? They are persistent. They are a persistent bunch. So, yeah, Brian, I, this is uh, the nearest green shirt I could find for St. Patrick's Day. So I figured I'd put it on, get a little green going on. I've got a tilly, a green tilly hat, dark green tilly hat sitting right over there that I might put on at some point to get even more green in. And tilly, of course, they're um, Irish, I would think because they've got that little symbol on the snaps. So, uh, let's see, James, uh, Neville's in the house. Uh, Andrew's in the house. Creppy today with that polo shirt, our wags. There you go. So, Clive bought an... Uh, yeah, we're going to talk about the ugly watches. <laughs> Speaking of Clive, there you go. Um, I hope... I hope he got a really good buy on that. I heard he paid 20000 for it. I don't know if that's true or false or whatever, but that's what I heard. And I hope it's a flipper. I made the comment in there. I hope it's a flipper. And then somebody else commented in there, oh, you're jealous. <laughs> I replied back, I'd never wear that watch. <laughs> you wouldn't find that watch on my wrist. Um, that's not going to happen. Uh, because you have a very high credit rating is why I, I hear you. Um, so, yeah, so what's the deal, folks, with the ugly watches? Why do people insist on buying these ugly watches? And I'm going to do a search on, I'm going to do a Google search here, ugly watches, just so that you know I'm not the one saying this. It's not just me, okay? Google says it, too. I'm going to do a search, ugly ugly watches okay I'll let you see this live ugly watches this is on Google and I'm gonna click on images okay and look at these watches they're pulling up here okay these are some ugly watches and I'll tell you people are actually buying some of these watches right they're actually buying some of these watches and look at them. What, you know, what do a lot of them have in common? A lot of them have just a lot of superfluous design and so forth that's just not needed. You know, just a lot of ugly case designs. I mean, and 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 I will I will grant you. I will grant you that um, that. Some of these watches might actually have a purpose. I don't know what that might be. Maybe just to shock people. But it just doesn't make sense to me to, to go out of your way and spend good, I don't know if it's hard-earned money or not, but good currency on watches that, that legitimately are not attractive. I'll put it that way. Uh, and some of them just plain old ugly. Um, finally, a little more relaxed look from True Liberty. Well, it starts getting hot. I'm not going to be wearing suits and all that stuff when it, when the temperatures rise. Um, so there's that. Some people have very poor taste. <laughs> You've got that right. The offshore looks like 
The sort of a watch a Russian mobster who wears oversized gold jewelry. Yeah, just really tacky, r really tacky. And, and when they started putting those real low-profile tires on the Range Rovers and they started putting the big wheels, you know, with the low-profile tires and real wide, you know, which are useless off-road, right? Uh, when they started doing all of that stuff, you talk about jumping the shark. I mean, you took a really good utilitarian vehicle. I had one of the first Range Rovers, and they were really great off-road. They, they're not very reliable vehicles. So they give trouble, but they really were fantastic off-road. And so now they've just made them totally pretty useless off-road with the low-profile tires and all that stuff. And so, oh, let me turn this off. I didn't mean to go to that. I didn't mean to go to that. Let me just turn that off. So I'll show you what I mean. Um, I'll see if I can pull up a picture here. A picture. Oh, and this is this this goes to what I, the video I did earlier today. Also, um, hmm, how come that's not coming up? Earlier today, I did a video comparing the uh, diver, the stunner, to a Land Rover. I'm not Land Rover, to a Land Cruiser. The reason I didn't compare it to the Land Rover is the Land Rover is not reliable enough. So, so we'll get into that discussion too, because that's pretty interesting. Okay, so here we go. Here are a couple of photos from many, many years ago. There's my Series 3 Land Rover, and you can, as you can see, we did take it off-road. And uh, there's the Range Rover. We were testing the deck that we just built to make sure it could handle weight. So we put the Land Rover and the Range Rover on the deck. But that was when the tires were nice, high profile, great for off-road. And so that was back in the day when they were really built. And I'll tell you what, with that um, brush guard that, that the previous owner had put on there, it had a nice angle bracket going back onto the frame, and it had that heavy-duty winch on there and all. We could run over trees anything like four inches in diameter or smaller. We could just run them over and break up the roots and then back up and then use the winch and just pull them right out of the ground and just make our own trails. That's how we did back in the day. Yeah, we used this stuff. We used this gear. And then another thing is, here's the thing. I had this grinder make a comment about my other video where I showed 10 months of heavy use on this stunner, okay, 10 months of daily use. Not abusive use, but daily normal use, right? Oh my gosh, you shouldn't use a watch like that, like that. You should get a Casio, a $25 Casio, and use it for that, and, and, and keep that other one in the, in, in the box, you know? I, I'm going to buy a watch and leave it in the box? Who are these people? Hey, let me know in the chat. Who are these people? What are they talking about? I'm going to buy a watch and leave it in the box? I'm not going to wear the watch? What planet are these people on? And then this guy posts a picture in one of the forums, and this is a little bit of a rant, okay, of him holding a dumbbell, and he had a steel and gold date chest on, and he's opining, oh, you know, sh should I use this when I'm working out? I mean, I might damage it, you know? And I put the comment in there. I said, the easiest way to lose a Rolex is to take it off your wrist, especially at a gym. You take it off and put it in your locker or something. You don't think people are going to know that thing's in the locker? You don't think it's not going to disappear? But that's beside the point. You, you buy a wristwatch to wear and to use. I'm going to take it off because I'm doing some kind of an activity? These are supposed to be durable, sports-related watches. That's the whole point of the Rolex Oyster case. Durability, folks. I, I don't get it. Put in the chat, am I just totally wrong on this? Should we not wear our watches? A little, uh, little bit of a rant today on a Sunday. Um, let's see here. The okay, let's see here. Uh, 
Um, uh, uh oh, in the urgent care. Oh, I just I'm just getting caught up on the. Okay, look your polo shirt. Um, I just purchased a few Lacoste polo shirts. Ladies like them. There you go. I'm sitting in urgent care, waiting to get stitches in my head. Ooh. Hope he has a good-looking nurse, though. That's the that's the only cool thing about that is maybe you'll have a good-looking nurse. Um. Now you are a loyal viewer. <laughs> All the best. What happened? Smash the back door of the forerunner on my head. Ooh. Ooh. Four forerunner one turkey vulture zero. The Range Rover is made for its modern use. Useless tires. No tech standard and reliability that lasts less than 50k miles. An absolute piece of junk. A Ford Explorer for twice. I hear you. The Range Rovers have gone totally, you know, they're just not. Even the one I had was a lot better than what they make now. And what they make, and it wasn't that the greatest. But the Series 3, that was a beast. That was a beast. And when they took the... um the Range Rovers through the Darien Gap in Central America. Guess what they used to to uh, to to uh, break the trail to to bla blaze the path, if you will. They used a, a Land Rover, like a, I think it was a Series Three. <laughs> hey, let it go ahead of the Range Rovers to clear things out, so the Range Rovers could go through. That was pretty cool. Um. Cisco trip went pear shape. Um, it was the Series Three the generation right before the Defender? The Series Three, I believe, was the last of that body style, and they made them for quite a while. I, I don't think they had like a Series Four. This one was a 1972 model, 1972, and it. It was a beast. We we used it to make some really nice trails and and uh, used it aggressively. So I even had a big trailer that I pulled with it, even though it just had a four cylinder because of the gearing. I could pull that trailer, and I actually put a German DKW on there and and moved it around with that utility trailer. So and you notice the reserve tags on that too. I had one five four five Virginia on that puppy so we always ran reserve tags and that's the name of that tune um, still thinking about a yacht master it's on the short list it's a fantastic looking piece and it certainly does not um, does not uh, fall into the ugly watch category. And what color is this shirt? It's like almost like a turquoise, a greenish blue turquoise. -ish. It's got more green to it, though, than blue. It's whatever. It, it looks pretty true on the monitor. It looks pretty true to real life. That's pretty close. Um, sport watch. Sport watch, yeah. These folks who box their watches are like old ladies with plastic on their sofas, afraid to sit. Neville, it's a perfect example, a perfect analogy. I mean, some of these ladies, I mean, bless their hearts. They'll buy this nice furniture like what I have behind me, and they'll have plastic covers on them for 50 years and never actually sat on the, on the actual sofa. That one's uh, got a real nice silk fabric and... It's stuffed with down and everything. I mean, it's super, super comfortable couches, right? Those are probably 30, 35 years old minimum. I got those a long time ago uh, at Mastercraft Interiors in, in Rockville, Maryland. I don't know if they're even still in business. I doubt they are. But those are, you know, nice high-end couches. But, yeah, they'd have them covered and never even sit on the actual fabric. My watches I wear, my clock's not. <laughs> there you go. A Sunday short sleeved rant, love it. Good looking nurses make things better. Absolutely, a good looking nurse. Hey, thanks guys. Um, oh well, I'm not an idiot. Yeah, yeah. What you do is you you you, you know, you have to select your nurse <laughs> with some thought. Um, 
500 episodes giveaway. Tech Webcast. Brad, Tech Webcast in the house. Techwebcast.info. Brad, put your URL in there. Remember to include HTTP colon slash slash, otherwise it won't be hotlink. Put your URL in there so they can click through and get into that giveaway. Is that an old Defender? That Yeah, that predates the Defender. Um, you're correct, Craig. You're just stuck in a room full of watch poor collectors and untreated OCD. <laughs> they have stopped making station wagons, so okay. Um, I live close to Darien. Oh, cool. Cool. Um, 100, 120 miles today riding off-road dirt riding on a motorcycle wearing my gold GMT ceramic. Yeah! I used to do a lot of off-roading. I had a Honda XL500. Um, let me see if I can find a picture of that puppy. I don't know if I tagged it, so I don't know if I'll be able to find it. Uh, and I had a I had a um, BMW R80 GS, which was on off their on off road that was made for the Paris to Dakar race. 1984 was the one that I had. Um, I don't know if I have a, I know I have a picture of mine, but I don't think I tagged it. Back in the day, I wasn't as concerned with tagging things properly so that they can be retrieved as I am now. But anyway, I'll find it at some point. It's out there. Okay, so let's see what we got going on here. Another trip to the barber. Uh, well, I went the other day. Oh, I went to Hoffman's, Hoffman's Market. She only had one of the roast beef subs, so because she had several of the cold cut subs, I went ahead and just grabbed a, whole, a cold cut sub. They're fantastic, too. It's almost a toss-up, which is better. I think the roast beef is better for you, right? But I grabbed one of the cold cut subs yesterday, and I had that, and it was fantastic. Fantastic. I got that on the way back from the uh, home show. Put up a video yesterday of the home show with John Riggins, Redskins Hall of Famer. Hall of Famer John Riggins in that video. Uh, I was in Bond Street, London the other day in a luxury store, and the sales girl had two Rolex turnographs from the 80s, which were utterly untouched, kept as that word you like, investments. <laughs> yeah, and I wonder how much money whoever lost on those. Those didn't turn out to be good investments. Uh, we're going to talk about investments, too, because so, some grinder made a comment about investors earlier today, too. I love those old Range Rovers and Toyota Land Cruisers. Yeah, the Land Cruisers are probably the best bet. Um, you know, they're just better vehicles. But they're, they're, they were basically a copy of the, of the uh, Land Rover. They were just basically, they copied it. And, of course, the Land Rover was a copy of the Willis Jeep but they just made with aluminum panels because a lot of the farmers were using the Willis Jeeps after the year, after the war and they were getting harder to get and all that. And they all liked them. And so the, that's why Rover started making the Land Rover for the farmers. So it's an interesting story. I've got the book right behind me here. Um, the Arab golf market gets the, Best spec Land Cruisers. You can spec one with a V8 turbo diesel on main. There you go. Yeah, there's a lot of wild ones in Australia, too. Happy St. Patty's Day. There you go. Um, how's it going, Chip? Okay. I'm going to put on the hat because maybe it'll look more green. It's a dark green. It's a Tilly hat. Herman, Herman Miller Arion. Yes. Yes, that's what the chair is. Very comfortable. Very comfortable. Very, very comfortable. I only use it for this, this, uh, these broadcasts because I have a standing desk for when I'm working. I don't sit. I stand. Uh, let's see. Roast beef all the way. Yeah, the roast beef subs are fantastic there. 
Oh, let's see. Um, please eat your cold cut sandwiches on air like Archie. <laughs> I might do a sandwich on air one time. Craig, any uh, St. Pat's plans today? Some green beer, perhaps. I don't drink. I'm not a drinker, so I probably won't be doing that. And I went last year to the um, Shamrock, and we shot a nice video and all there for them. Uh, you can check that out on my YouTube channel here. But I don't think I'm going to be going there, getting in all that uh, mess crowd and all that. Had two Toyota 4Runners great trucks. I don't believe Mr. Ship drinks. There you go. So the Forerunners are great, too, but the, the Land Cruiser is, is all that and a bag of chips. Let me get the Tilly hat. Time check. <clears throat> there you can see the chair. So that's the chair. Ah. Okay. Tilly hat time. There we go. Get a little dark green. Little dark green Tilly hat. And then this grinder on the uh, video I did on this. This grinder had to chime in, of course, and say that it was a fake, you know, and all this, right? Um, <laughs> these people. I mean, this, this couldn't be more real, right? It's got the got their symbols on here and everything. It's all solid brass. It's all the real, real stuff, right? So anyway, um, so these grinders. So this other grinder, <laughs> probably the same guy, he gets on and he's, he's given this diatribe about how my 18238 was fake, right? <laughs> how the one that I brought, bought new from the AD, right? And had for like 19 years. How that also was fake. So there you go. Everything's fake. Um, speaking of big, rugged SUVs, did you see my new old vehicle I just picked up, Craig? 2006 lifted H3 Hummer. I'm loving it. Um, I didn't know I had, didn't see it. You should send send a photo. We'll show it on air here. Um, 2006. It's pro H3 Hummer. Okay, so that's not the 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 actual real Hummer. That's the one that's like the the one that they kind of made look like a Hummer. But that's a heavy-duty piece, I'm sure. I'm sure that's a heavy-duty piece. Land Rover FJ40 with a Chevy 350 V8. Off-road hot rod right there. There you go. Excellent. I, I, I have an H1 and love it. Yeah, H1. That's I think that's the real deal, right? Isn't it? Isn't that the one that's the real, real Hummer? Those aren't very comfortable, though, with that big, like, thing in the middle and all separating the two. Uh, it's really ma ma mainly for military use. I'll tell you, I, I don't think you can, you can beat a Land Cruiser for just normal on-off-road excursion-type use. I think it's real hard to beat a Land Cruiser. Um, let's see. Never buy fake stuff. Fake stuff for fake people. Um, you know you bought the right watch when you enjoy watching the time on it and watch an extra time just because you think it's so beautiful to look at. There you go. I'm going to be heading out with the wife soon for some adult beverages and some corned beef and cabbage. There you go. I sent you two pics of the Hummer. Okay, let's pull those up. Let's pull those puppies up. And we'll talk about the um, the uh, ugly watches. I'm not getting that email. Why is this so slow? Refresh this inbox. The heck is going on? It's always like this when I'm streaming, though. It doesn't like to. Um... Are you sure you sent it to the right email address? Remember, my name has two P's in it. Craig Ship at gmail.com because I don't see it. Don't see it in my inbox here. Don't see it. Craig Ship with two P's at gmail.com. Um, speaking of nice things, this week I've been in Orlando. You visited the 
Morris Museum in Winter Park and their amazing Tiffany collection. No, I haven't. But that would be cool. That would be cool. Yes, the H1 with the military version, but... Um, out of each year, how many days do you estimate you use your day date for 19 years you used it? Um, on and off, I wore that. I, I, I probably, I probably wore it half of the time, if you were to average it all out during that time frame. And when I say wore it, I'd say for at least six to eight hours a day, half of the time. That's that's probably would be the best estimate of that. Because there were a couple of years there where I wore it almost constantly, and there were a couple of years that I did, wore it almost not at all. So if you averaged all that out, uh, probably about that. What do you think of Tesla cars? I would not buy one at this point. I'm not. They're not very good. They're not very reliable. I would buy just a Toyota, and and I would wait for. If you really want all electric, I would wait for Toyota to roll one out in a couple of years. That's what I'd do. Okay, here we go. Here's a here's an H1 Hummer. I got the H1 Hummer photo. We're going to show this one. Oh, that's cool. That's cool. I like the color. And I like the um I like the body style with the open back there. That's kind of cool. Absolutely. I guess that's got the 6.2 liter diesel in it. I guess that's what it's got. So yeah, my email's working, folks. But you got to send it to the right email. Now, here's another one. Here's the other Hummer. Here's the H3. There's the H3. Yeah, they're pretty robust, too. I'm not a big fan of the lift kits and the bigger tires and all that stuff. Again, that's getting towards jumping the shark a little bit. Kind of unnecessary. But um, those tires do look pretty bad. Pretty bad to the bone. Could also get stopped in some states for the tires outside of the fenders like that. So I don't like to, you know, tempt fate like that. Um, uh, let's see. Looks like a military style. Well, the H1 is basically a military style vehicle, just made just barely so you can use it on the road. Um, all right, so let's look at the... the um, I mean, do we really even have to go over the ugly watch thing? I mean, let's do this. Let's go over some some alternatives that these people that are hell-bent on having these ugly watches, let's look at some alternatives. Okay, so we already talked about, um, we already talked about the Turnograph. That's a very attractive all-around use watch for $7,400, right? Okay, so now you figure that the Clivester spent twenty thousand. Let's assume that, and so let's see what he could get for twenty thousand dollars. And I'm just going to search a uh, day date here, and I don't think he get, he can't get a um, a day date forty for that. He'd have to sell another one of his steel stunners. And put that money with it to get a date eight forty, which would probably be a good move. But let's see what he could get. Okay. Um, let's see. He does use spectacles, so let's try to find one here that has good, that would have good visibility for him. Um, I'm still looking, folks. Don't. Don't panic anybody. I'll let you see what I'm looking at. All right. We're still looking for one that would have good visibility and that would um, would be a good alternative. You know, this one with the white dial, that would be pretty awesome. That would be very legible with the white dial. Nice contrast with those hands. Really classy looking for an attorney to wear. So let's see. This one might have the older style clasp. Yes. 
See, this is 2002. They transitioned to the other clasp in about 2004. Now, this one will have the solid center links because it's a six-digit reference, but it, it doesn't have the newer clasp, which that, that clasp there actually works fine. It worked fine for me for years, and it's, I think, a little more trim than the newer clasp. But let's go back and let's keep looking. Let's keep looking for the counselor at law for something that would be an appropriate alternative. A competitive option, as nothing fancy would say. Here we go. Back the truck up. Now, he'd have to make an offer on this because I think that's tall money for it, 118238. But look at that with that nice dial. Let's see. And this is going to probably have the newer clasp. For that money, it better. Yeah. So it's got the newer clasp. It's going to have the solid center links. That bezel looks a little bit polished. That's too much money for that. You know, the problem here is, folks, I'll tell you what the problem see that See how rounded all the fluting is on that? Yeah, here's the problem. I'm going to have to plead guilty to this one. I think I've bumped the prices up on these day dates, talking about them so much. I think I'm the reason there's a resurgence of the day date and also other 18 karat gold watches so that's way too much money for that watch in that condition now of course it has not sold but um let's see if there's anything else here for the clivester that would be a competitive option uh to to you know to to just get away from the ugly watch thing a little bit. The only people that care that you've got that ugly watch are other watch people that care about that watch. It's just ridiculous to have to buy a watch because of what those yamokes say. They don't have any taste or style. If they're wearing a watch like that, I can tell you right now, they don't have any taste or style. Uh, I mean, that's not a, not a stretch. I mean, they would wear something like this, right? This is the kind of thing they would wear. I mean, they've got no class, okay? No class at all. Um, wow, there's one with a smooth bezel, but I, I don't want to, we don't want to go there. We don't want to go there. Um, here's another one that would be pretty conservative. That's a classy looking watch. That's got the loomed dial. And th this one for that price. Oh, let's go back and see. I guess it's got the older clasp. Yeah, it's got the older style clasp. But again, it's going to have the solid center links. Not bad. Prices are up, folks. Prices are up a little bit on these day dates. And guess what? The prices are down on the steel models. You see Crown and, Crown and Calibers having a big sale, and they're blowing out some, some Submariners and stuff. The prices on the steel watches are going down, folks. People are starting to realize that steel is not a precious metal. They're going for the gold. I told the Clivester, what, a month or two ago, I said, go for the gold. They don't listen to me. They don't listen. I told them to buy Bitcoin back in the day when it was a lot cheaper. They don't listen. I'm trying to find one here that would be a really good alternative. Um, a really good alternative. Look at the price on this one. My gosh, they're asking $21,000? What in the heck? That's got the smooth bezel. That is kind of cool looking, though, with that smooth bezel. I have to say, 
That is kind of cool looking. Very different looking. I bet you if you offered him 20000 they'd take it in a heartbeat. Can you imagine the counselor wearing that? Now, it has no loom, but still. I mean, can you imagine him going into a courtroom? I mean, how much juice he would have? Going in with that? Back the truck up and give him the settlement check. Settle that case right away. There's a man that takes no prisoners wearing that. All right, let's see what else is going on. Let's see what else is going on. We've got some grinders in here. Let's, let's see what's going on. His was 18K, okay. And Blue Ship Buddha, it's sad because I love my Hummer. I wish they still made them, Durr says. Um, Clive said he paid roughly 18000 plus, okay. Uh, you could still get a date date for that. I really like the H2, okay. The AP came out of left field, never would have guessed it. Still a cool watch. Nah, I'd pass on that. That's not the, I hope he's going to flip it. I really just hope it's a flipper for him. Craig, uh, check this one out. Jaeger LaCultra Master Ultra Thin. I think we've looked at those before. They're, they're, they're cool watches. They're cool watches. We've looked at them before. Okay, uh, and let's see. There's one in rolls gold for ninety five hundred. Uh, this one looks like it's regular gold, unless the picture's off. Let's see here. Um, that's pretty classy looking. The lugs are pretty good. Case design is pretty good. That's pretty cool, the case back. Yeah, nice and thin. Nice shape. I would have liked the lugs to be a little more rounded. as a bit, They're a little bit squared off on the sides. But, yeah, I mean, you can't fault that. That would be a fantastic dress watch for an attorney. $9,150. Uh, oh, it's rose gold. Okay, yeah, that's the, the picture didn't kind of it looks more like regular gold i'd rather have regular gold than rose gold but yeah yeah that would be a make my where anything's better than than that ugly watch um let's see 15202 ap thanks guys uh uh it suits him well no that watch doesn't suit anybody well <laughs> Let's call it the way we see it, folks. That watch doesn't suit anybody well. By any standards, by any, you know, reasoning whatsoever, that is a borderline ugly watch. You might as well just pass on that altogether and just get something that's attractive. Um, and he's an attorney, for gosh sakes. I mean, no, that doesn't go with a suit. Never will. People are, if people see that on his wrist, they'll be like, what the heck is this? And when you have to explain to them what it is, we have to, oh, well, this is, this is what everybody in the watch community loves. When you have to explain it, you've already lost the battle, right? With a day date, you don't have to explain anything. They see it. It's stunning. They don't have to know it's a Rolex. They don't have to know anything about it. They look at it. It's stunning. Even this watch, they look at that on wrist with a nice suit. Uh, they're going to know that that's stunning. They have, will have no clue what it is, but they will know that that's a stunning, eat-up-with-class watch. You see that other concoction with the exposed screws and all that stuff and the square and the integrated bracelet and the black pushers and stuff? It looks like an, an, an amalgamation of crap. Um, it is not a classy-looking watch. Why not have Clive on? Uh, he won't come on the show anymore. He, he said he won't come on the show anymore. He's always invited, but he won't come on. Um, 
Craig driving the date date market. I, I think I have. I think I have. I hate to say it, but I think I've poisoned the well for those of you that want to buy. I think it might be too late. Jose P is certainly not ugly. I think it looks good on him. <sighs> Teach their own, man. Oh, boy. It's like... <laughs> It's like the mom that has the hideous looking child. Oh, it's, it's a gorgeous child. And uh, like, you know, and like babies, right? You always got to say the baby is attractive, right? No baby is really attractive, right? They all look hideous. But oh, it's the cutest thing. Um, <laughs> yeah, that watch is the cutest thing. <laughs> Whoa. Um, uh, yes, Craig, you influ influenced me to buy a day date too. Big wrist and got a good deal. Okay. Well, I don't know about the Day Date 2, though. I don't think I would have recommended that one. I think I would have recommended the Day Date 40. But the Day Date 2 is, is still a lot better than, than these ugly watches we're talking about. What about the Rolex Mother of Pearl Diamond Dial? I'm not a big fan of the Diamond Dials, but, again, anything would be better than uh, taking something stupid. Craig, I've noticed a lot of the 118, 118-238s going for the low mid 16s only have a bracelet that fits around at six and a half inch wrists so they're missing um links that's a shame they're probably trying to sell you links for extra money uh david is to, for sure sells a new 36 for 25k yeah you should be able to get a new 36 easily for 25k because dudley paid 28.5 for his date 840 uh, it is impressive, but not better than your gold GS. Um, I sold the gold GS. It's in a, in the hands of a new owner. The only GS I have now is the stunning diver. Look at that thing keeping time, which I wear, by the way. No, I do not keep it in the box, tucked away, so it doesn't get a scratch on it. I wear the watch. It still looks gorgeous. I don't get these people not wearing their damn watches. I've been following Steel Rolex GMT2 prices for the last few months, and their prices have been steadily increasing. Uh, I don't think so. They're not selling very well. A lot of people are discounting, and, and Clive, of course, has had a lot of trouble selling some of his steel stunners. Yeah, the steel stunner market is soft, going down. You guys better get out of them while you can. Get out what you can get out. Get out while there's a lifeboat left. There aren't that many lifeboats, folks. Get on an early boat. Get out. You heard it here. There's a shortage of lifeboats. Get out. The, the jail sin master thin is one I, I sat next to the GS stunner. Okay. All right, let's take a look at the pick. Yeah, I remember that pick. <clears throat> I remember that pick. Uh, did you send it to me now, or are you talking about the old pick? I'm not going to be able to find the old pick. I, I got too many emails. I, I'm not going to be able to find that. But um, Let's see here. Somebody did a review on one of my clients. Make sure it was a good one. It was a good one. My photos are getting noticed. 50,000 views. Okay. That's good news. I'll archive that. All right. Yeah, I don't see any new photos in the inbox, but yeah. Uh, Cliver said 16K first and then went to 18K. I'm just anticipating the next lie. <laughs> I hope it's a flipper. I hope he's going to flip that thing, get out of it. Uh, let's see. But the longer you stay in something like that, the more likely it is you're going to get stuck in it. For classic dress watch, I'm a big fan of the 18 karat Cartier Louis Tank. Good enough for Cary Grant. Good enough for any gentleman. There you go, an 18 karat. Yeah. I'm not usually a big fan of square watches, but that I could make a... An 18 karat K, one of those, I could make an exception. Craig, you have gone up in my estimation. BMW R80, Paris to Dakar, uh, was 
mine was red, sold it to put my daughter through university. Um, let me see if I can pull up a picture of the R80 GS. Am I, for some reason, my um, flicker is not, not working great today on searches. It's just like, it's not searching right. This time it worked. Okay, so um, so here is, let's view all three of these. Um, here is the R80GS next to the R100RT. And this picture dates from about, let's see, that was my Mercedes diesel in the background and, and my it's 1966 Dodge Dart in front of that. Um, so that would be, let's see, that diesel was a 75, so this would be about 1985-ish. So that R80GS was a couple of years old. Um, so then uh, here's a picture of it. Those seats were not very comfortable, so I had one of those air seats on it. Oh, I was on an off-road trip. Um, with the saddle bags and the tank bag on it and all that good stuff. And then I ultimately had a custom seat made for it later that was more comfortable. But yeah, there's the R80 GS that I bought new back in 1984. That was a 1984 R80 GS was what that was. So there you go. Um, all babies hideous. Craig's a level 10 savage. Well, I mean, come on, let's be truthful here. I mean, you know, the, the, they, they, they are what they are. They date to fit my big wrist better, love it. Okay, there you go. Is there drama with Clive? I think I'm missing something. Well, no, I mean, he said, he said on one of his shows that, that I'm not welcome on his show anymore and, and, and that he's not going to go on my show. One of the trolls was giving him a hard time for letting me come on his show. And obviously he sided with the troll. I mean, that's okay. It's his show. He, he welcomes the trollish activities and comments over there. And, and that's fine. Let them all go over there. That's where I want them to be. They can be over there and they can be on Archie's uh, show. That's a good place for the trolls. We just don't need them over here. I really like Clive's new AP. I think it's a great piece for him, and it's a lovely looking doll. Okay. To each their own. Um, selling watches is difficult. Absolutely it's difficult, especially when the market is starting to get soft, which I think it is, except for the date eight seem to be taking off. Bark and Jack's in the house. Uh, that GS really isn't a stunner. Well, let's take a look at that. Let's take another look at that. I think it's pretty stunning. I think it's pretty stunning. Those titanium hands, that sweep of the second hand, the shape of the case, the comfort on wrist with that titanium. Of course, I buy my watches to wear them. I don't buy them to put them in a safety deposit box. So to each their own. If you're wearing your watches, you want it to be comfortable on wrist. And speak of comfort, this Apple Watch with the link bracelet, Series 1, Super comfortable on wrist. Super, super comfortable on wrist. It's got a refinished case, Thomas. What exactly does that mean? Um, you mean Clivester's watch? Well, obviously, that would be why he would get a better buy on it if it's had finish work done on it. I mean, that knocks the price. Um... The only thing nice about it is the movement. Oh, maybe you... Have you ever seen one in person? <laughs> I think there's a lot more nice about it than that, but anyway. Uh, Craig, start telling everyone the day date is a terrible watch. That way the prices will go down so I can get a good deal on 18238. Yeah, don't buy an 18... A 118238, you know. 36 mil watches are passe. You know, everybody wants big watches now. At least as big as this one, 44 mils. That's a 44 mil beast, right? That's what people want on their wrist. They don't want any 36 mil 
watches. So leave the uh, the 18 karat gold day date stunners alone. Uh, let them let them sit and let, let the values just kind of take a little bit of a hit. Uh, so that my buddy can step in and snatch one. That's what we do there. So I took care of that for you, Durr. What is the best budget watch? How much? How much do you want to spend? Either you wear it or you lose money. Many 19K Daytonas sitting on the market. I think a lot of people are going to take a bath when this market really gets soft because as it really starts getting soft there's going to be a lot of panic and there's going to be a lot of people trying to get rid of these steel sport watches that they st stocked up on. It's going to be ugly and for somebody who actually wants one of those watches to actually wear and use it's going to be a buyer's market but offer low money, low money. For example, a uh, ceramic sub date, um, new box and papers. I'd say six grand. That's what I would. I'd, I'd be at about six grand on that. Um, let's see. <laughs> Welcome, Adrian. Be prepared for a fight. No, we don't have fights here. This is all friendly revelry here. Um, really looking forward to seeing your upcoming updates. Basil World. Well, he does some really well-produced videos. He, he creates some quality content, Bark and Jack. He absolutely does. I don't think it's wise to give people investment advice because when the market crashes, some people might actually sue him. I know in the U.S., we got to be really careful about that sort of thing. If you're giving investment advice, I mean, you could be really responsible for some for some things so it's people are tend to be very careful about doing that I don't know what it's like in the UK um, let's see here let's see each zone indeed just think Craig is moaning a lot about other people's watches if his, his opinion is fact we all buy what we like that's why this watch world is interesting. No, 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 no. You, no, Mark and Jack, you got it wrong here. You don't understand at all. On this channel, what we do is we, we give facts. We give actual real information about watches and other expensive items. And, and, and all the information we give here is not tainted with passion and with the 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 fervor of the hunt and with obsession and with all these other things you see in the watch forums and so forth we just give the the unmitigated factual truth here like when we say a watch is ugly you can take to the bank that watch is ugly that if you were to show that to 20 different people on the street 18 of them would say that is ugly right Whereas if you took an 18 karat gold date eight and you showed it to 20 people on the street, they'd probably try to take it away from you. So here I got a, I got a Nazi calling me. I got to decline that. So anyway, um, you know, that's the deal on all of this is, is this is the channel where the folks come when they want the absolute truth. They can get that other information you know about investing in watches and them going up in value and all of that stuff they can get that on all the other channels here they want to hear the truth or they wouldn't be here probably because it's certainly not an entertaining show uh so there's that <laughs> so i hope that cleared cleared things up um <laughs> so um just email to pick okay let me take a look at this pick, and we'll get back to this. Uh, but I'm honored that Adrian would even be here for a, a, a brief period of time in the chat, that he'd even hang out here. Uh, that's pretty cool. So there you go. There's the, there's the um, 35 mil Grand Seiko Stunner next to the Jaeger LaCultra. Okay, good. Now that we've seen that.
And of course, the Grand Seiko is more attractive. Of course it is. But, you know, it's hard to beat that particular Grand Seiko. That was a stunning, stunning case design. Um, let's see here. But a dealer gets you coming and going, so let's not think it was a great deal or anything. Looks like the GS SBGA 231 new prices are falling drastically. Saw it on luxury time last week for 5260. No, that's about what you could buy them for. That's about in the neighborhood. Um, yeah, if you're if you're astute, you should be able to get them in the low fives. I think most dealers it's going to be around 5500, but 5260 is pretty good. I am not going to say exactly what I paid for mine, but I'll say I did pay less than that for mine. But I'm not going to say the exact number that I paid for mine. But yeah, you can get a deal on a GS, especially if you got cash in your hand. That's one of the things I like about a GS is I can get a deal. I like to get a deal. Um, okay, Archie ripped off his shirt for 50 Aussie. <laughs> He didn't wear any trousers. Okay. I hope it was a worn out shirt. Um, shark mesh shark mesh, and beads of rice bracelets are really comfortable. Oh, I hear you. All right, I'm out of here, guy. Blue shirt Buddha is out of the house. Okay. Um, uh, do you know the London watch collector? I talk about a guy that's probably got some bucks. I, I'm guessing that he's got some bucks, that he's got real money. Uh, let's see, up to 15. Um, uh, Adrian, I'm with you on the GS Stunner. <laughs> Gary, let's take another look at that thing. That thing is stunning. <laughs> Actually, it does look a lot better in person than it does on this feed, but it looks pretty stunning right there, too. Um, been thinking about Explorers and Explore 2s lately, vintage and modern. I don't think you can go too wrong with an Explorer. I really don't. I don't know how you can go wrong with an Explorer. When the market cracks, Clive's watch will be worth 10 k like I said, I hope he flips it. I hope he doesn't have it that long. I hope he flips it. Um, shoot, per SBGN003 or SBGN005? The, the 005, that's the, uh, the blue dial, right? This watch you're talking about? Is that what we're talking about? I haven't pulled it up here, but if that's what you're talking about, the blue. I think the blue dial. I'm out of the urgent care. Only five staples in the back of my head. Ooh. Not a fan of the Explorer, too. Yeah, I'd go with the Explorer. I'd rather have the Explorer. I'd skip on the two, too. Buy a steel sports Rolex, a gold stunner, and wear both. Two and done. There you go. I did that for many years. That was my rotation. The 1655 haunts me. Okay. Would be good to maybe have a show talking about handmade shoes, barkers, churches, etc. We're trying to get some clothing folks, some high-end clothing folks on the network here. We're working on it. We're working on it. First, I got to get Steve set up with his gear so he's broadcasting comfortably, high-quality content, and then we're going to try to get a high-end clothing, clothing guy. We're working on this. It's a work in progress. Um, Craig, do you like SBGV238? All right, let me pull it up. Da, 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 da. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that's a, that's a nice watch. That's a nice watch. When I first saw it, I, um, 
I wasn't a big fan of that case design. That's the case design that is like the a tribute to the older cases. See how the lugs are a little bit squared off? But uh, it's, it's not a deal breaker. And, and that's a pretty amazing watch. And yeah, if you can get a good deal on one, maybe in the $2,800 range, uh, I think that's a, that could be a great all-around, wear all the time, uh, no-nonsense watch for $2,800. Absolutely. Might be a better idea to reclassify appreciating Rolex as flip opportunities rather than investments. Well, I think any watch, you could say that. I mean, if you can buy it cheap and you can resell it for a profit, th that's a horse of a different color. That's not an investment. That's, an investment implies you're going to buy and hold something for a reasonably long period of time, and over time it's going to go up in value. That's really what an investment is. If you're buying inventory, if you're buying a watch and you're going to resell it, that's more like inventory for a business where you're dealing in something. And yes, there are people that do that successfully, but it is not easy to do. And most people that try to do it, just like most people that start any business, most people fail. Like 80% of all businesses fail, right? It's not easy to be in business because it's a competitive environment and um, it takes knowledge and it takes a lot of skills that most people, quite frankly, don't have. So that's why most people get burned being in the watch business. Let's see here. Um, so did you advising on buying bitcoins? Oh, no, no. I've never advised people to buy bitcoins. I've told people that I am a long-term holder of bitcoin. I didn't tell them to buy it. Matter of fact, when asked... I've told people don't buy anything, don't invest in anything unless you've paid off all of your debts and you are financially secure. In other words, you have a nice nest egg, so on and so forth. And then decide on the things that you're going to buy as investments, you know, real estate, stocks, and be very diverse. Have a very diverse, uh, uh, spread your risk around, right? Um, that's what I've always said. So there you go. All that said, I'm a long-term investor and believer in the concept of Bitcoin. I hope that it succeeds. I know it is a, it's high risk because there are a lot of people that would like to kill it. A lot of incumbents that would like to see it not live, not succeed, not exist. So there are a lot of headwinds that it faces. But so far, for 10 years, it's been able to fight off all attacks. And I got to give it kudos for lasting 10 years. And every day it lasts beyond that means it's stronger and stronger all the time. And I would not want to be the person 10 years from now that doesn't have Bitcoin. <laughs> I wouldn't want to be that person. So there you go. So just so we made that all clear. Um, <clears throat> five stipples in the head. Good excuse to buy a new watch. New watch time. I don't think you understand the difference between fact and opinion. <laughs> Mark and Jack, it doesn't make any difference. It's my channel, right? I mean... <laughs> I could say whatever I want here, and I can say that it's a fact. That's my channel. On your channel, you could say what you want, and and you know, and state it as a fact if you'd like. Don't you don't have to be wound so tight, guy. I mean, <laughs> Jeez. some people take some of this stuff way too seriously. Um. <laughs> oh boy. Um. But it's a fact. When I say a watch is an ugly watch, you can take it to the bank. It's an ugly watch. Okay, You may think it's the, the cutest thing on the face of this earth, but um, I was a professional appraiser for many years. People paid me a lot of money to make determinations as to the quality of something and what something looked like, and that's what I did. I was a professional appraiser 
for almost 20 years, okay? And I know how to appraise something. I know how to look at something and determine, you know, what's going on there and, and, and all these little things. I mean, it's just been, it's a gift I've always had, all right? And take it, take it from me. If I look at your watch and you've got a watch and it's an ugly watch, then it's an ugly watch. That's what that is. Um, and it, it is what it is. <clears throat> When you hear the air raid sign, you and your family uh, family must take cover. Uh-oh. My, uh, my wife would give me an additional five staples if I grab a new watch right now. Uh-oh. <laughs> In your opinion. Here comes another guy with my opinion. Of course it's my opinion. Uh, didn't you just say the watch market will crash? Where is the fact in that? I... S- <laughs> The market is already getting soft, okay? You can already see people having sales. People can't sell their watches. This overinflated steel watch market where people are paying insane prices for these steel watches is going to come to an end, okay? Now, you cannot heed the warning. You can sit there and, and, and just in denial and like, like things are just going to keep going up and up and up forever, right? Just like when Bitcoin in 2017 was going up like crazy. Everybody was buying like crazy. There was all this FOMO, fear of missing out. It was going insane, right? I had people calling me that I hadn't heard from them in two or three years about Bitcoin. You know, years had gone by from when I told them about Bitcoin the first time. And they're calling me up when it's at $15,000, right? And they're saying, hey, remember that Bitcoin you told me about? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hey, it's up, it's up to $15,000. Should I buy? I said, no, you don't buy when it's high. You buy when it's low. That's not how this works. You don't buy when it's at record highs. I, I sold some at $15,000, right? And, and, you know, these people, what the hell? Why are they buying at the top of the market? Wait for the market to come down. That's when you buy. But, oh, well, you can't help these people, half of them. You can't help these people. They're going to do what they're going to do. Um, ready for you finish case on the AP. I'll, <laughs> I'll, I'll throw some of those tossers out. <laughs> Give me a wrench. Mr. Robert wants a wrench. Hey, how come Mr. Robert doesn't have a wrench? Turkey Vulture, Thomas, some of you wrench guys, let me know. Should Mr. Robert have a wrench? Excellent listeners in the house. The gold GS Stunner looks like a lady's watch next to JLC you showed. Depends on the size of your wrist. It, it actually looked okay on my wrist. I got a pretty big wrist, and his wrist is smaller than mine. Blue. So I think it looks great on his wrist. He, he, he sent some wrist shots, and I think it looked great on his wrist. Remember, for many, 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 many decades, 35 mil was a perfect size for a man's dress watch. It's just in this big watch craze that's happened here lately that, you know, everybody wants these huge, ungainly watches, especially for dress purposes. Now, for sport purposes, a larger watch, that's fine. I don't have any problem with that, especially if it's comfortable on wrists like this one. I mean, this titanium diver is super comfortable on my wrist. But that's not an all-arounder or a dress watch. Dress watch, 35, 36 mils is fine. Even 34 mils works. Um, GMTs and Explorers are all my, on my mind. There you go. I've heard you say the Nautilus is boring and rural oak, ugly. You have no, yeah, I would skip on, s- skip those. Skip those. There are a bunch of attractive watches you can buy. Don't, don't buy the ugly ones. There's too many good-looking watches out there. He could have bought a Calatrava, for God's sakes, for that kind of money. He could have bought a stunning Calatrava. Are you freaking kidding me? Okay. Um, It seems the price of the Rolex Hawk keeps going up on the gray market. It's frustrating. Um, Just wait. Be patient, Ray. Be patient. If you really want one, be patient. All good things come to those who wait. Adrian, do you think that the current mill grouse range will be discontinued? The hour markers look wrong. Hands are too large. 
and the PR indicator makes the dial too busy, not to mention the size of the case far too large. They, hopefully they'll come out with a way to make it anti-magnetic without having that Faraday cage, and they can get it back down to the thickness of like a, um, an Oyster Perpetual, something like that. You know, they, they should be able to do the, all the anti-magnetic stuff without having that, that Faraday cage in there, make it smaller. I agree with that. The London watch corrector probably just works in the Harrods luxury watch department. <laughs> I don't know. I, I think he's actually buying those watches, and I, I, I hope he's a DECA millionaire, in which case buying those watches the way he is is like peanuts to him, right? I hope it's not like, like a lot of these guys, a lot of these watch guys where, like, you know, their total net net worth is two hundred thousand dollars, and one hundred fifty thousand of that is in watches. I, I hope that's not the case. And he's got a lot more than one hundred fifty thousand dollars worth of watches. So, I'm guessing he's a Deca millionaire. He's worth multiple, you know, tens of millions of dollars. I'm guessing. In which case, it doesn't matter to him the price of the watches. Uh, let's see. I love to see Rolex pay some tribute to ten nineteen this year. The GS with blue tile, dial is outstanding, but looks like an Explorer 2 with a blue dial. It's fine that it looks like an Explorer 2. That's okay. It's a good-looking watch. It's good to see. I mean, that the, we had a subscriber that, that saw one in person that said that it's, it is absolutely stunning. I haven't seen one in person yet, so I'm going to withhold judgment until I do. But I've had reports from people in the field that have seen it that said that it is fantastic. And talk about a, a deal. You can get those for a deal. Uh, let's see here. No, if, if uh, Bark and Jack says it on this, on this show, then it becomes fact. That's how that works. Okay, so if he says it here on this show, then that it becomes fact. Um. This is a fact zone. You and Clive never developed any chem chemistry. Uh, excellent listener. Yeah, I generally don't. <laughs> don't develop chemistry <laughs> with anybody. I'm not looking for chemistry. I'm 61 years old, right? I'm beyond the chemistry thing. Uh, exactly all opinion. I'm trying to help Craig understand the difference. Yep, yeah, bark. No, no, no. Whatever you say here is, is fact. I'm trying to get you to understand the difference. If you if you say it here in this chat, it's fact. Okay, so pick your ugliest watch that you've got and say it's gorgeous, and I'll agree with you. Okay, because it's here. So that's how that works. Tommy Burnett is with the Clive Hive. There you go. Uh, you might as well go bespoke than buy high end fashion clothing um i believe in buying like really conservative stuff so that it doesn't go out of style in and out of style so you can wear it for years because like if you buy a suit like from oxford for example o-x-x-f-o-r-d oxford clothes and let's say you spend five thousand dollars on the suit okay it would be a good idea to have that designed in such a way that it's not going to be out of style next season. So you wouldn't want to go with the real narrow lapels that some of them are wearing right now with the real short jackets where the jacket looks like it's for a little boy. You wouldn't want to go with that kind of a design. You'd want to do a more classic design so that five years from now you can still be wearing that suit. Because if you get the, the style like they're wearing now with the real sh narrow lapels and the real short coats and stuff, it, it, it's going to look goofy five years from now, right? Uh, it kind of looks goofy right now. <laughs> so, so that'll fall into the ugly suit category, okay? Um, GMT Grand Seiko, nice. There you go. Run up to my ad, 100 feet from my house. Barkin' Jack, do you think the current Milgrass range? Oh, we already, we already talked about that. Um... Gasket watch, Caltrava, I don't know what that means. Oh, casket. Oh, for when you die? Is that what you're talking about? I like that hat, Craig. What kind? It's a Tilly hat. Tilly. From Canada. In honor of um, St. Patty's Day. Uh, 
that is arbitrage, not investment. There you go. We got some sophisticated terms in here. This is a sophisticated channel, so we got sophisticated terms. Hey, by the way, my shave came courtesy of that razor, my timeless razor, timelessrazor.com. Those are fantastic razors. Fantastic. Now, don't worry about the age marks and the sun marks and all that. That has nothing to do with the razor. That has to do with me being old and being out in the sun too much in the past. So, so that's the deal there. But the razor's fantastic. Okay, so let's see what else we got going on here. Um, Craig, buy the Turnagraph. Turnagraph is pretty cool. Or the GMT Grand Seiko. Andrew's in the house making suggestions. There we go. I'm going to make a decision by fall. I'll, I'll guarantee you guys that. I'm going to make a decision by fall. I guess it's true what they say. Never meet your heroes, Vegas says. That in itself is financial advice, Craig. What's financial advice? Um, here's the thing, Bark and Jack, about financial advice. Here's the issue here. If, if, if you encourage somebody to take a risk and to buy something and they do that and then they get burned, I think that's why people are hesitant to, to give that kind of advice. Now, if you tell somebody not to do that risky thing, right, and they don't do it, then you know, you're going to be fine some cautionary advice i've never heard about, of anybody being sued for giving cautionary advice in other words somebody coming back and saying hey you told me not to invest in that and and it went up like crazy and i missed out and so i want my money right that's not common what does happen sometimes is if somebody gives advice to okay buy these steel sport rolexes and put them in the safety deposit box and you're going to be safe and they're going to probably go up in value, and then they get burned doing that, that, I think, is where the sticky wicket comes in. Again, I don't know what it's like in the UK, but I'm just saying what, what goes on around here on that kind of stuff. Vegas is getting, getting wrenched a little bit. Uh, I guess it's true what they say, never meet your heroes. Well, that, one, that wasn't a bad comment. Uh, I wouldn't have wrenched him for that. Yes, uh, happy St. Patrick's Day. There we go. I'll be honest, I like the GS Titan, but I would, wouldn't would take it or the Maxi Case Submariner. I'd rather have a Seamaster Planet Ocean. I hear you. I hear you. Um, no BFF for Craig and Bark and Jack. Uh, how's the Batman, Adrian? Uh, let's see here. It's another, I like Craig. Let's accept he's what you would call an arrogant tech. <laughs> That's okay. That, you can leave a comment like that. That's not a, um, you don't need to wrench him on that. Um, let's see. Uh, Batman. Oh, sorry, if I come across, if I came across wound up, I'm really not. I sat here in my dressing gown and slippers. I'm chilled. There you go. There you go. You got any watches you're selling, Bark and Jack? Put them in the put them in the chat. We'll we'll try to sell a watch for you here. And he likes the turnographs. I think he likes the turnographs. I, you know, I'm starting to like the newer turnograph too, Bark and Jack. I like the older one. I think you've talked about it. But I'm starting to warm to the newer one with the Super Jubilee bracelet because it has a newer bracelet. And I'm starting to warm to that, the newer style turnograph bezel. Before I wasn't. Let's, let's take a look at it here. Let's see if we still got it in here. We still got the turnograph here somewhere. Yeah, there it is. There it is on Watchbox Studios. 
And fortunately, the market is still kind of soft on these. This is not sold. And that's kind of cool. I mean, I'm not, I probably wouldn't go for the white dial, but that picture is terrible, of course, but that one's not this bad. But that could be kind of cool, too. And I'm not a fan of the rose gold, to tell you the truth. I'd rather have regular gold. But um, that is not a hateful watch for $8,500. Um, Batman is a winner. I wish I could find one at list. Give it time. Uh, GS, GMT, SBG, and 001 look so amazing, gorgeous in the pics I've seen posted. It, the 001, is that the limited edition one? I'm not sure if I like that one as much as the one with the blue dial, but oh well. Um... Should Mr. Robert have a wrench? Let me know, wrench gang, if Mr. Robert should have a wrench or not. Oh, sorry. I come. Uh, oh, I already read that. I got it. I'm behind here. This thing jumped on me. Hi, Craig. I, I went to try on an Omega Seamaster Aquaterra today, and I have to say I was very disappointed with the casework compared to my Grand Seiko. Well, yeah. It's pretty hard to compare anything to the detail and the quality of a Grand Seiko. I want, you know, that's a pretty high bar that you're comparing it to. Uh, the, the Grand Seiko finishing and detailing is pretty stunning. If I do say so myself. Um, does Archie's two-tone two -tone Daytona look more aesthetically appealing than Clive's AP? <laughs> I would think so. My gosh, that's not even a fair fight. Of course the Rolex is going to be more attractive with a better case design and everything. Uh, Bark and Jack, I have a Z Blue and love it nearly as much as my Kermit. There was talk of a new one with a new movement and straight second hand and gossip about one with a rotating bezel. Okay. Remember, it takes a man to suffer ignorance and smile. There you go. Absolutely. Yeah, you're getting wrenched for some things that are on the borderline there, Vegas. I bet you are being kind of negative. So, and we try to be positive on this channel. So that's probably why they wrenched you. But yeah, let's try to be positive on this channel. Um, how about... And even when we call out an ugly watch, that's being positive because we're trying to keep people from making a mistake of buying an Apple uh, Apple watch. Yeah, that too. But buying an ugly watch and then putting it on their wrist. We don't want people to fall into that trap of getting an ugly watch and then putting it on their wrist. That's a, a trap we don't want people to fall into. How about Seiko for the decent, reasonably priced watch? Redone 1951 Hamilton Fleetwood 14K solid gold. I have running to two seconds a day plus. There you go. Hey, Park, did you put your watch back in the safe deposit box? Um, well, I mean, you, you know, it depends on where you live. If you've got a dangerous area where you're living, then I guess anything valuable, you got to be really careful. Um, that's why I like to have my watch on my wrist, and they got to take it off my wrist. And I've had one guy try that, but that th th they're not going to be very successful at that. Uh, Clivers is doing some consulting for El Chapo. Ha ha. <laughs> uh, <laughs> good day, mate. Okay. Stop, calm down. I, I wasn't disagreeing with you about the watch market, Bark and Jack. Who are you talking to? I'm, I'm calm. I'm, I'm like this all the time. This is me calm. <laughs> this is me calm and relaxed. Ah, drinking my H2O that came out of a well, well water. Clivers is a, oh my gosh, 
buy low, sell high. There you go. Well, here's the thing. Let me and let me give you an example of this. <clears throat> My buddy Steve, who runs a jewelry store, he often has used Rolexes there. And what's interesting is the prices he sells them for are really not that high. He had a um, Submariner, no date, recently that was mint, box and papers, $7,000. Um, he had a date just, all steel, with a steel fluted bezel, you know, an older one, for 2200 bucks. right? I mean, he, he has some of these watches for, I think, fair prices. And I asked him, I said, I said, um, you know, what's your margin on these these things? And he says, we have to get at least 30%, or we're not even going to fool with it, at least, right? He, he likes to get 50%, but the minimum is 30%. So if you run that number, um, let's run that number real quick here. You know, and again, we, we, we deal with facts here, okay? Okay? Numbers. Numbers are facts. So let's take uh, $7,000 and let's say 0.70. I know this isn't exactly the way to do it, but that means he would have paid 4,900 bucks for that watch. Okay? So somebody sold that watch to him for 4,900 bucks or less. A Submariner no date ceramic, right? So, um, so don't think that, that, uh, that it's easy to be in this business and that it's easy to get rid of these watches. He told me the other day that a customer came in and traded a Rolex on a Grand Seiko and that he made a good deal on it. And it was a week or so before that that he had a customer come in and traded a Rolex on a Omega believe it or not. And he was happy with the deal. So if Steve was happy with the deal, you know he got that Rolex at a pretty good price because we just talked about his markup, right, on a used watch. So, um, and look at, look at the Clivester. I mean, he's been selling some of these watches for a long time. He's been putting a lot of effort into selling these watches. He's consigned them to people. He's tried to sell them himself. Some of them he has sold himself. Some of them he sold on my show one time. Uh, but it's, it's effort. It's time, effort, expertise. It's risk, taking risks, doing it, right? Um, these are not that liquid. They're, they're, you can't just take this watch and immediately say, okay, I've got a steel, a GMT-2 in all steel, and it's worth $9,000, according to all these websites and so forth. It's $9,000, and you can't just take that watch and, and say, okay, give me $9,000 for it. It's not so easy. Who's going to give you the 9000 How are you going to get in touch with them? How are they going to send you the money? Et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So I think it's disingenuous to think, to spread the word around that these things are such good investments <clears throat> and so they're, they're so liquid. Um, it's true about steel watch market being a bubble. It was hyped by Rolex due to low supply. People overspent on them. But at the end of the day, it's only steel. Blue, here's the thing. It isn't Rolex that's been hyping it up. It's been all the, the Rolex people. It's been all the Rolex fanboys. Uh, all talking it up in all the forums and everything. And all the YouTube channels. I'm holding wearing some steel Rolex, but I don't care what the market does. I love them. Well, yeah, if, if you just like the watches, and if they're a small part of your life, if... Let's say, for example, you've got $30,000 in steel Rolexes, right? If your net worth is $5 million, then that's not a big deal. That's a small part of your world. You're okay, right? But if your net worth is $150,000 and you've got, you know, 30, 40,000, whatever invested in steel watches, that is what we call uh, poor financial planning. 
okay? <laughs> so it all depends on what part of your world that, 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 that money tied up in that watch, those watches, what percentage of your world that is. Check out Dave Ramsey. He's got a lot of information on this sort of thing. Um, is that an Australian bush hat? No, this is a Tilly, Tilly hat. I do have some Australian hats that are made of kangaroo. Uh, I can get one of those if you'd like. Put a, let me know in the chat if you'd like me to bring out one of those kangaroo hats. Uh, here, here. Um, Turkey Vulture, it's about the passion. Bark and Jack. Um, Adrian, what do you think of a white dial OP39 as a first one watch Rolex? Well, Adrian can chime in, but I'll give you my opinion. I think it's a fantastic watch if your wrist is big enough. If you've got at least a 7.25 inch wrist, I think that'd be great. Now, I agree with that. Can't beat a nice Calatrava. Uh, let's see here. Barking at the guys always discussing silly watch investments. Bark and Jack is the guy always discussing silly watch investments. Well, I think a lot of the YouTubers you use the term investments way too much with regard to watches. I would call them an expense. I would call them a purchase. I would call them a lot of things. The last thing I would call them would be an investment. And call them inventory if you're in the business of buying and selling them. There's a lot of things you can call them, but I wouldn't call them an investment. Cliver's bought a refinished case turd. Oh, jeez, Mr. Robert. Let's not be so negative. <laughs> Bury me in a white gold automatic Caltrava. I, yeah, I would go with yellow gold. I really would on a Calatrava, personally. I, it, I just think it'd be a better move. I think the white gold they used needs to be refinished, too, right? Isn't it just the rhodium plated? Not, it's not like the Rolex white gold that goes all the way through. Yeah, I'd go with the yellow gold. Excellent listener in the house. Saw the pre-owned Hulk this morning on Goldberg, over 14000 And see, I mean... I wouldn't want a, a maxi case Rolex anyway. That's an ugly case design. I would just pass on that. There are other options that are much better options. Bark and Jack, nice channel. By yeah, Bark and Jack has high quality uh, production, high, high production quality, and he shows some really nice watches. Uh, I'm, I'm subscribed. I got the bell clicked. I know when he puts up videos. Um, also, the guy who bought a Kermit for 5K as an investment and could sell it for 13K, he, should, he better sell it. He better take the money. <laughs> Get out while the getting's good. Here's the thing. Again, you don't know what that watch is worth until you sell it and you got that money in your hand and you subtract any expenses that were involved in selling it, and so on and so forth. See what your actual settlement value was. Keep in mind, an investment should double every seven years on average. So if you've got $5,000 and you invest it you know, in, in decent, high-quality mutual funds, for example, that are returning a little over 10%, that money's going to double every seven years. So 5,000 becomes 10,000. Another seven years later, becomes 20,000. Another seven years later, becomes 40,000. That's the power of compound interest. That's the power of a proper investment. Almost no watches are going to do that for you. Okay? Almost none of them. So if you want to play with fire, if you want to try to beat the odds, if you want to try to be the one that happens to pick just the right watch and, and you, like winning the lottery, all of a sudden, 20 years later, you've made a ton of money on that watch, great. Very difficult to do. Very high risk. So there's, there's the deal on that. Um...
and it's real easy also to go back and look at the past and to say, oh, if I'd have bought such and such a model of Daytona, you know, I'd have made this amount of money. But even if you run the numbers on most of those and you do that doubling thing I just did, most of them don't, don't beat a real investment. Even the ones that do the high flyers, most of them don't. Now, if you buy one brand new at the AD today and you sell it for a $5,000 profit tomorrow, that's a horse of a different color. That's speculating and that's buying and selling and that's flipping and that's a different thing. Obviously, that would be a good move if you can pull it off. But again, there are risks involved in doing that too. So you just have to weigh all the risks versus the rewards and then do what you think is right. Um... <clears throat> A GSGMT is stunning, but it's a shame that it looks so much like Explorer 2. It doesn't bother me. If I mean, if it's a good design, it's a good design. It's, it's um, you know, people get bent out of shape about one designer borrowing an element from another designer and vice versa and so on and so forth. It It is what it is. I mean, if it's an attractive watch, like the reason that a lot of these divers' watches share similar attributes is it just works i mean it's 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 functionality i mean it's it they're designed to be legible underwater they're designed to be legible in all lighting conditions they're designed to you know have the rotating bezel and so forth at the time you dive i mean there's just certain attributes and yes so they're going to look similar and so i don't i really don't see a problem with that i i think you know, obviously there are some things that I would like to see different on any of these watches. If I was the designer, right, there's some things I would change. Like the lugs, it's kind of hard to, I don't like the way they have this design, but the lugs are the same on, on the other watch as, as on this gray one. But I would have these a little more rounded. I, I don't know you, that you need that. I think you could round these a little more. And... I, yeah, there's some things that I would change, but not not many. I mean, it's it's a damn attractive looking watch. Again, by all accounts, I haven't seen it in person yet, but I've had other people report to me that have that say it's pretty damn stunning. And I don't really think you would mistake it for an Explorer Two. I, I think the case is different enough. The bracelet's even different enough. The dial is is completely different the hands i mean i yeah i i don't think you would uh and i think they're 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 both attractive watches but they're they're different animals the the uh the grand seiko would be great for somebody who wants a watch they can put down for a couple days and then just put back on and it's always going to be dead on accurate and they just don't have to worry about it right uh which is nice. It's nice to be able to put it down for three days, pick it up, and not have to worry about winding it and resetting it and synchronizing the hand with the second hand and all that stuff that you got to do. Uh, let's see. We're going to wrap this up soon here. I'm getting hungry, but same old Ken and Barbie dolls in the garage from the kids. Probably an investment, too. Yeah, again, hindsight's twenty twenty, right? If you If you got lucky... And you happen to have some uh, Babe Ruth baseball cards, like brand new. Like there's this this find that that somebody stumbled across in some attic, right? All these, this, like the biggest baseball card find ever. Like all these like mint condition, super rare cards, like and just tons of them, right? They had to, they literally had to release the cards over time carefully so that they didn't crash the market because all of a sudden there were these like super rare cards but they had like 20 of them right uh for like each one and so like talk about the find of a century right i think it was worth millions of dollars you can google it you'll find out about it i mean yeah i mean if if you get that lucky right if you just happen to hoard something and then you kept it for like a hundred years or something um in mint condition yeah, but but that's not um, that's not an investment. That's that's like getting lucky. That's striking pay dirt. Um, 
flip is a better word to use than investment when talking about a Kermit, since an investment is something you regularly pay into and compound interest over a long period of time. Well, Brian, um, you, know, you could look at any hard asset as an investment. You certainly could. Absolutely, you could look at a watch as an investment. If you were smart enough to know the future and to know what that thing is going to be worth or have a reasonable, you know, conclusion of fact that you think it's going to be worth X amount 10 years from now and you're going to tie up X amount of money in it for those 10 years, that absolutely is an investment. That's just like buying a piece of raw land, right? If I buy a piece of raw land, I'm not building on it or anything, and I'm just anticipating that that land is going to be worth more money. Sure, I have to pay taxes on it every year, just like the watch. You might have to pay fees to store it in the safety deposit box, whatever, right? So there might be some expenses associated with keeping it for that period of time. But I'm I'm speculating that that capital that I tie up in that thing is going to increase over that period of time X amount so that it's going to give me a certain return, right? Uh, that would absolutely be an investment. But I would say with watches, it would be very high risk that it's very difficult to predict which watch I would buy today, right now, and keep for 10 years and get a, a good solid return on that 10 years, uh, tying that money up in that thing. I think it'd be very high risk. But maybe some people can pull it off. But the flip thing, that would be more like buying it from the AD today, brand new, and two days later selling it to somebody else for five grand more. That would be what I would call flipping. Um, and that'd be like just having inventory, just buying something, having an inventory for a few days, and then selling it. That's like a, a little bit different thing, I think. Uh, I like the gist, but those hands are ugly. That's just an opinion. Of course, anything related to aesthetics is totally subjective and personal. There you go. Let's take another look at that. Yeah, it, you know, and also in person, it does look better than on these macro shots. It looks pretty fantastic on wrist, so you might want to actually look at it in person to really decide. <sighs> Let's see. Kermits aren't worth much in Tulsa, I'm told. Okay. Okay. What's your favorite fashion? Uh, okay, I think I already read that. Okay. Use straight edge razor. No, I haven't used a straight edge razor. I'm... A little bit scared of that, but maybe at some point I'll try. Craig, make sure to take your suits and put them in a safe deposit box when not wearing them. There you go. Um, my wife taught special, uh, taught special aids classes in the 80s. One of her topics with the kids she still cares for deeply was difference in fact and opinion. They discussed it at length. There is a difference. <laughs> <laughs> excellent listener <laughs> he's learning though excellent listeners learning I'll give him credit for that he's learning um, <clears throat> are the goons going to throw me out only if you start misbehaving excellent listener you know I mean I know that sometimes you get a little bit you know you want attention and stuff and you start misbehaving if you do they probably will hit you with the wrench that's how this works um Let's see. Love the old turnograph. Yeah, 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 the old turnograph, especially if you got one in really great shape without much stretch in the bracelet or anything like that. Yeah, I think it's a fantastic all arounder. Just a wear anytime, wear forever, really cool piece. But the advantage to the newer one is that. That super bracelet with the solid center links and all that, all those benefits. I haven't struggled to sell any watches, but thanks for the offer. There you go. Barking Jack, nailing it. Selling his watches whenever he wants to, turning them into cash because of his strong following and his powerful YouTube brand. He's in motion, making deals. Absolutely. 
Nothing wrong with that. Get the turnograph. It's unique and stunning. Absolutely, it's stunning. Talk more motorcycles, Craig. I have equal amount of bikes and watches. My two passions. There you go. Nice hat, Mr. Ship. You know, the nice thing about those BMWs <clears throat> is you could run those suckers throttle wide open literally for hours. You could just crank them wide open like that to R100 RT. I forget what the top speed on it was, 130 or whatever the heck it was. But anyway, it would get up to that top speed, and you could just run them at that speed, just wide open throttle literally for hours. They were pretty freaking cool. I remember I used to ride that thing to the beach sometimes. I'd leave at like 6 a.m., and I'd get there at like, you know, two hours later, and uh, it was a nice ride. Uh, nice ride. I'll put it that way. Um, and then I had the... Um, that, that first off-road bike I had was the XL500, the Honda XL500, the one-cylinder, 500cc. That thing was a beast. Uh, that was a great off-roading bike. I haven't had a ton of bikes. I had a, a four-cylinder Honda 350. Um, I haven't had a ton of them, but that was back in the day. That was a long time ago. Let's see here. Uh, no wrench for Mr. Robert Craig. Uh-oh, we got a no wrench for Mr. Robert. Uh-oh. <laughs> uh, Common or garden watch if GS was removed. Yeah, but you got to see one of these things in person. They are freaking amazing. And again, I've had a lot of Rolexes, folks. And I'm telling you, they are amazing. I don't get the turnograph myself. Very confusing look. Yeah, but they're cool. They're cool. Jubilee bracelet on the turn guard looks really comfortable. Oh, it, it is. Jubilee is fantastic. My first watch was a, um, a 1978. I bought it in 78. I think it had been in the case for a year or two. Um, a uh, date just with the uh, engine turn bezel. Steel date just with the engine turn bezel. 560 bucks, Brand new. And... Um, that was a fantastically comfortable watch. Now, that one had the Jubilee bracelet on it that was made in the USA, believe it or not. Um, yeah, it's back in the safety deposit box. I live in central London. It's the best place for it. There you go. Heart rate never goes over 75. Hey, Adrian, do you have uh, Spectre? on in the background there you go um trying to i'm trying to make a new website bark and jack being creative making stuff happen absolutely he is you gotta like these youngsters out there that are making stuff happen burning the midnight oil literally and making stuff happen. Uh, or Bitcoin. I'm going to hold my Bitcoin long term, folks. I'm holding mine until 2028. Mark it down. Write it down. I'm holding mine until 2028 minimum. Till 2028. Maybe even beyond that. Uh... Or if you live in a trailer in Oklahoma, it depends on where you are in Oklahoma. That might be kind of cool. Craig, if, if in London, visit Cordings, part owned by Eric Clapton, proper clothing. Well, there you go. I'm not buying any more clothing, Steve. I've got clothing to last me the rest of my life. I'm not buying any more clothing. I'm done with that. Dave Ramsey is the fun Nazi, LOL. Um, yeah, he sets some people straight. I mean, people call in with all kinds of issues. I, I listen to his show sometimes when I walk, when I do my walks. I, I think it's funny. 
these people call in with all these debts. <laughs> yeah, he's asked them, okay, now how much credit card debt do you have? And they're telling him, and okay, and what's your car loans? They've got like two cars, you know, they're like 40 grand on, you know. I mean, these people are totally buried. <laughs> and he sits there and counsels them on how to get them out of debt. I'm like, my God, man, <laughs> you got to be good. If you can get these people out of debt, <laughs> you got to be good. <laughs> but he, he'll he calmly go through the procedure. Okay, you got to pay this first. The, uh, <laughs> and these people are totally freaking buried. You know, oh, I've got 280000 in in student loans. And yeah, but I dropped out of college. <laughs> I was... I was going for yeah a, a medical degree, but I didn't make it, you know. But yeah, but I got I got the I still got the the college loans to pay off. These people are buried. It's it, I mean it's it's scary, but that's the way it is in the U.S. I don't know if it's like that overseas here, but two thirds of Americans are broke, have no net worth whatsoever, totally broke, and some of them are in heavy debt as well. But two thirds have no assets whatsoever. Zero assets. It's really gotten sad. The, the, the debt is really incredible, the consumer debt. Long Dow will double over the next two years as rush out of bonds, especially go to, hey, our wags, are you still in the house or are you gone? I'd like to hear what our wags has to say about that. If he's long on Dow. Long on the on the Dow. Uh, yeah, I love the OP range. Oyster Perpetual. There you go. Nice and thin on wrist. Uncluttered dial. Absolutely. And no maxi case. Yeah, comfortable on wrist. What's not the like? Brushed links, center links. Not none of those shiny center links to show scratches. What's not to like there? Everyone hates the Dow move. Uh, Tucker Vulture, how can anybody be a fun Nazi? He meant he, he squelches fun. He tells people to think long term and to not live for today. You know how Archie says live for today? You know, just, hey, you want to watch this, buy it, right? Just put on a credit card. He says the opposite. He says delayed gratification is the key. Save, save and invest. Live like no one else today so that you, later you can live and give like no one else. That's his saying. Um, so there you go. Bitcoin will be dumped when governments decide to use electronic fiat money and set their own up. Paul, why would, why would any of us Bitcoiners want to have the government money? That's the whole point of Bitcoin is not to have the government money. The government money is not limited in, in supply like Bitcoin is. Bitcoin is limited to a certain number of units, right? That's why we like it. We don't want to buy something that's unlimited. We already have fiat currency. We're trying to get something that is not fiat currency, that is limited, that is not controlled by governments. That's the whole point of Bitcoin. So, no, I won't be selling my Bitcoin. And a lot of the Bitcoiners won't be selling their Bitcoin. So there, there'll be people that'll panic, that have weak hands, that'll sell. But I'll... I'll be happy to buy theirs up if it gets cheap enough. I'll buy more. Um, so there you go. Um, Steve, I'm just making fun of his wise financial decisions and saving as opposed to just blowing money on things I can't afford. I respect Dave. Turkey Vulture says, um, No, some people have been getting the time out here. Craig Buffett, at Warren Buffett is totally against uh, Bitcoin because he's in the banking business. So he's, he's said a lot of bad things about Bitcoin. Bitcoin's a threat to his, his businesses. Um, similar to investing in Bitcoin. What is similar to investing in Bitcoin? I'm not sure what you're talking about. Form follows function. Craig, you should just go gray get the new Pepsi GMT and get it over. I'm on the list. If she calls me and has it ready for me, I'm going to go down there and look at it. If I like it, like I think I might like it, I'll get it. I'm on the list. We'll see what happens. We'll see if she calls me. Craig, my grandmother always said it's rude to wear a hat indoors. What was your grandmother's wise word? 
You know, I, I, I shouldn't be wearing the hat indoors. Absolutely, I shouldn't be. But this is, a, this is called a prop. This is called a prop. I'm an entertainer. <laughs> this is called a prop. And it's celebrating um, St. Patty's Day because Tilly, I think, is uh, Irish. Right? Right, I think. Or something like that. <laughs> Um, somewhere over there. I don't know where the Tilly people are from. Can tell? Can you all tell me where, where Tilly, the guy that started the Tilly hat, where he's from? Um, let's see here. <clears throat> let's see. Steve, a viewer wanted him to wear a hat, and he's in his own house by himself. Nothing wrong with that. There you go. Our wags in the house chiming in with some etiquette, some, some counseling on etiquette. There you go. That's right. Be positive. Don't hit me with a wrench. Oh, no. Duck. Duck. He's trying to hit you with the wrench. What type of boots would you pick with a suit? Well, see, that's the thing. I probably wouldn't wear the boots with the suit. Probably wouldn't do that. Um, but you could get, like, if you really wanted to do boots, for, if you had some reason why you needed to do boots, you could get um, Alden. Uh, they make some really nice boots. They even make some with wingtips on them and so on that are real kind of dressy looking. So look at Alden, uh, the boots that they have. You could do that. You could force that if you want, if you really needed to wear uh, boots for some reason. <clears throat> Tim can wear his Oakley backwards over his head, then Craig can wear his hat in his own house. <laughs> uh, is my 2012 PLO, PROF, a joke watch? It keeps going. I don't know what that is. Craig has some cool hats. Craig has way too many hats. Uh, Craig, you, some, of you, some of you people have too many watches. I have too many hats. I travel, and a lot of times when I used to travel, I would make it a point of always buying a hat wherever I went to because I wouldn't pack one with me. I'd say, okay, I'll just get one there, right? And so on all my different trips, I have different hats that I've gotten at <laughs> different places. A lot of times when I went to New York, there was a hatter right near Central Station there, and I used to go to that the hatter and and get a hat, and I bought two or three hats from him. Um, so yeah, I've got way too many hats. Of course, I'm losing all my hair, so it's 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 good to have hats because the hair there's no more hair to protect my head from the sun, so I got to put a hat on. I've never had a hat. Had I've never had an investment that doubled in seven years. You better get some better investments. Yep, you better talk to a, an investment advisor. That's the kind of return you should be getting. Um, okay, it looks like you were kicked out of the f fist fake f Facebook group. Oh boy! Oh darn! <laughs> darn! I was kicked out of a group with like 700 members. Oh my gosh, it's the end of the world. <laughs> All right. Oh well. So it so it is. So it goes. The watches Clive's own were ugly. <laughs> yeah, he bought an ugly watch there. Um, chain versus shaft of motorcycle. Well, see, that's the thing. The shaft is great when everything's working out great. It's great. I think on the Hondas, they're good. I think on the BMWs, they're pretty good. You lose a little bit of performance. Um, but, no, I, I like them. I like them. They're quiet, and I think they're good. I haven't had a motorcycle, though, for some years now. I, I sold my last motorcycle maybe five years ago. Something like that. Um, I may get another one at some point. I don't know. Um, I like the Turnograph 2. If you buy the Rolls Gold, you will need a new DuPont pen. Now, I hear you. I hear you. I probably won't buy the Rose Gold, though. 
Um, you can find them sometimes in yellow gold. Um, Craig, the day date is beautiful and like a Jaguar E-type. The, the AP offshore is cool like a new Lamborghini. Yeah, I would pass on the offshore. Yeah, I'd rather get the E-type too. That's a good move. That's a good idea. But the E-types, they, they do give trouble. <laughs> oh, boy. Probably get a Acura NSX or something like that. Uh, something a little more reliable. But, uh, yeah, I would pass on the offshore. Um, would, you, would you advise buy Bitcoin and hold long term? I'm telling you that's what I am doing. I'm not going to tell anybody else to do it. It's obviously high risk. So I would make sure that you have plenty of other investments prior to doing that, that you have, that you're pretty financially secure. But I wouldn't want to be the guy that 10 years from now says, darn, I should have bought a Bitcoin back in the day. I'm not going to be that guy because I already have it. So I'm not going to miss out on this uh, opportunity. I'll put it that way. That's the name of that tune because you ain't going to get this this is a life changing thing. This is a, this is a Bitcoin is a big deal, and it, things like this do not come along very often. There was the internet came along, right? There's been some big developments in the past. There was electricity. Remember that it came along. That was a big deal. Electricity. The personal computer was a pretty big deal, right? The internet's a pretty big deal. Bitcoin, pretty big deal. And for the first time, you've got something in Bitcoin that's similar to those other things. But with Bitcoin, you can own a piece of the action. With those other things, you really couldn't own a piece of the action. Sure, you could have bought a little stock in Microsoft or something like that. You know, you could have done some things here and there. But you couldn't own really a piece of, of, of the action like you can with Bitcoin. With Bitcoin, you can literally own a piece of the Bitcoin network by buying some Bitcoin. Uh, that's, that's a rare opportunity that, that um, I'm not going to miss out on. I'll put it that way. Uh, so, but I'd research the heck out of it. I would really educate yourself. I've got some stuff on my website, craigship.com slash downloads. There's a link in the description. Go there. I've got a bunch of videos, a bunch of information there. I would, I would say it, it, you might want to Educate yourself on it. Uh, do you think MBAs are overrated? I don't know. I, I wouldn't think so. I would think if you got an MBA, that's pretty good. But that, that doesn't necessarily give you a work ethic. Uh, let's see. Any Basel word predictions? I hope they fix the maxi case. I hope they fix that, and I hope they put the new movements in the, like the 36 mil day date. I hope they roll the new movement into pretty much all the models. It's, it's, they might as well do it. Uh, let's see. I'm going to have to wrap this up here. Um, Uh, they would just outlaw Bitcoin under terrorist slash criminal reasons, and it would not exist as governments will make electronic. It's going to be very hard for them to outlaw Bitcoin. It's all over the world, Paul. The cat is out of the bag. It's out of the bag. Remember, it's been pronounced dead almost 300 times over the last 10 years. It's already been pronounced dead, and it just won't die. It's, it's not so easy to kill Bitcoin. And go look at my link and all and kind of educate yourself on it a little bit. And you'll see what I mean. It's not, not so easy to kill. Um, see if I'm wrong. Uh, yeah, well, time will tell if you're wrong or not. Absolutely. Uh, yes, currently long Dow and S&P is much better, but I don't think it will double in the near future. Bonds aren't going to do much in the next two years. There you go. There you go. I'm still long on my investments. Oh, uh, let's see. Google says Tilly is a German name. Hmm, interesting. Interesting. 
I'm more of a Mark II man. Vintage is my preference. Check out sovereign debt in Europe. Rates will blow when the QE stops and most pension funds hold debt and will be a flood out of the bond market. Money has to find liquid. Okay. Leaves dollar assets move from public to private sector. You should sell those extra hats and invest the money in mutual funds. They will double every seven years. I should sell some of the hats. The problem is they're not worth, used hats aren't worth much money, even if they're good hats. Barcelona hats are really top quality. Absolutely. Uh, I have sold some stuff on eBay. I sold actually a fair amount of stuff. Um, I sold some clothing. I sold some Gucci loafers that I wasn't wearing. I have sold some surplus stuff that I haven't been wearing. And I might sell some more stuff. Oh, let's see. Um, equities and money ones at that. Okay. Racking up debt is not fun. A lot of people do it. QE money from Europe is being invested in U.S. and dollar assets. Okay. Shaft will stand up or lay you down, powering up or down. Um, yeah, it does. It, the, the, the bike lifts up. Yeah, it's kind of. I, I think it's kind of neat. Yeah, it doesn't. It doesn't bother me. How many clothes do you have? Oh my gosh! Don't get me started. I got way too many clothes. Sorry I'm late. Happy St. Patty's Day. Uh, does not get enough love to me. It's Panerai. But better in every way. Yeah, I would skip on the Panerais. No, Bitcoin can be outlawed by U.S. government overnight when they decide to control the action and electronic money is plain and simple. Don't own... <laughs> Paul, they're not that powerful. They can't do it. Okay? I mean... And, and first of all, think about it this way. <clears throat> they would shoot themselves in the foot if they did that. The countries that have tried to outlaw Bitcoin <clears throat> have found that what happens is the Bitcoiners, the miners, all the, the commerce around that moves to another country. It's portable, right? It can move wherever it wants. And, and so they would drive a lot of these people out of the country, a lot of wealth out of the country, if they tried to do that. And there are countries that are embracing Bitcoin that the people would go to. People would vote with their feet, right? It would just like if you shut off the internet, right? You, you, it's called cutting your nose off to spite your face. I mean, there are a lot of problems associated with them trying to shut down Bitcoin. A lot of problems. So I wouldn't bet on it. Obviously, I'm betting against it. I, I, don't, I don't think they're going to take draconian action against Bitcoin. I, I don't think they're going to do it. Now, some of the altcoins, some of the scam coins and all that, absolutely they will. And some of the exchanges that are scammy uh, and some of the custody solutions that are scammy, yeah, they'll go after them. But Bitcoin itself... Um, that is totally decentralized. There's no boss. There's nobody they can arrest. Uh, there's no server they can shut down to kill it. It's a, you know, million-headed monster. Um, no, it's not so easy, and there would be a lot of problems with them trying to shut down Bitcoin. A lot of problems. So, no, I don't think they're going to do it. And like I say, they couldn't do it even if they wanted to. They could shut it down in the U.S. as far as exchanges and things like that. But remember how well prohibition went when they tried to shut down people drinking liquor. That didn't go very well either. Do you hold, a, do you hold physical gold and silver? Yes. Yes, I have gold and silver and platinum. I have lots of Litecoin. Uh, that's okay. I, I had some Litecoin at one point in time, but I got more educated and I sold my Litecoin and, and turned it into Bitcoin. I, I would rather just myself hold Bitcoin long, but it's okay to have some Litecoin, I guess. Craig, what about the possibility of U.S. government banning Bitcoin? I want to buy one, but I'm not sure. Blue says. Again, I think it's a 
very long shot that they would, I don't know how they would do it. It'd be very, very difficult for them to do it. Anyway, research it, um, but no, I, I, I don't see that happening anytime soon. Uh, and even if they did ban it, you could still own your Bitcoin. They can't take your Bitcoin away from you. That's the neat thing about Bitcoin is it's unconfiscatable. It's not like other assets where the government can come to you and say, give, give me that, and they can force you to g give the Bitcoin. If you have your private keys somewhere safe where they can't get to them, then they can't. They, there's no way they can get to your Bitcoin. They can get a court order, they can do whatever the hell they want, but they can't get to your Bitcoin. There's no 800 number, there's no 1-800-BITCOIN that they can call and say, hey, we're seizing Craig's account, give us his Bitcoin. It, it doesn't exist. You control your own Bitcoin. Nobody else does. So th this is a horse of a different color, folks. This, this is not a normal asset where, where the government or other authorities can go after it and take it. It's, it's unconfiscatable. Okay, that's one of the key elements, that's one of the key attributes of Bitcoin. It can't be confiscated. Um, I know many brands, but Alden boots are looking nice. There you go. Yeah, Alden are very nice. Tilly and Durables is a Canadian hat company. Correct, it is. <clears throat> what would the U.S. government have to, do, have to do to ban Bitcoin, Blue says? I don't know how they could possibly do it, Blue. I, I, I think it would be pretty much impossible for them to do it. You tell me. I, I, I have no idea how they could do it. It's decentralized. There's nobody in charge. There's nothing, nobody they can go to talk to. You need to have people behind the curtain globally in the financial world, Craig. Hate to see you lose all your money. Well, I mean, if the government comes after me and, and takes my money, takes my investments, takes my houses, takes my cars, takes everything I have, gold, silver, everything, the government can do that. They can confiscate all those things. They can't confiscate Bitcoin. But yes, they can take all my other assets. That's the government can do that. They have the guns. Um but they can't take your Bitcoin. Sorry, Craig, you outlasted me today. Got to go eat something. I hear you, excellent listener. I got to eat something too. Don't hit Paul with a wrench. He seems very reasonable. There you go. Drone enthusiasts, most politicians have absolutely no clue about what they do, what they do to wealth. Just look at what Kumo said, their taxes did, the wealth in the state, um, really. What is FA? TCA, Craig, U.S. government is cashing, is chasing down taxes and have the weight behind them to do so. Bitcoin is next. They can, the government can go after you for tax evasion or whatever. They can seize your accounts. They can, they can do all kinds of things with your assets. Exactly. Absolutely they can do that. That's one of the big advantages of Bitcoin is that they can't get, get your Bitcoin. They can get everything else. Absolutely they can get everything else. But unless you give them your private key, they can't get your Bitcoin. Now, if you give them voluntarily give them your private keys, then yes, they can get your Bitcoin. Um, but you have to give it to them. They can't take it. All the other things they can just take. You don't have to give it to them. They can take your bank account. They can take your house. They can take your car. They can take everything, right? But Bitcoin, you have to give it to them. That's a big difference. Um, really, Clegg, NSA, enough said. Uh, what's NSA going to do? I'd be more worried about what China has baked into their network elements coming out of Hawaii. And what it could do to Bitcoin? No, 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 no. They can't do anything Bitcoin network. Gold has no value, already invested, no interest crude there. Your gold is just a kind of like a hedge, really. Uh, you know, generally, you wouldn't want to have a lot of money in, in, in something like that. You'd want to have a small amount of your wealth in gold, silver, platinum, things like that. That's more like a hedge if everything else goes to pot. You know, you're hoping that that won't. Um, so, yeah, I wouldn't have a lot of money in that. Just a small amount. Um, 
I hold silver as a hedge against inflation, not as an investment, but never in history has gold and silver not held value. I hear you. So if the U.S. government shuts it down, we won't lose your Bitcoin. They, they can't shut down Bitcoin. Bitcoin's all over the world. It's not, it's not um, in the U.S. It's everywhere. It's, it's in hundreds of countries all around the world. The U.S. can't shut it down, okay? It's, it's decentralized. You know what decentralized means? <laughs> um, look it up, folks. Um, is it taxable? No. No, it's not taxable. Now, if you, if you have Bitcoin on an exchange, if you give Bitcoin to a third party, like Coinbase or somebody like that, and you are buying and selling Bitcoin on an exchange, you are responsible for claiming any profits just like any other transaction. If I bought and sold stocks and I made money, I've got to claim that income. Or the tax man can come after you and say, I want my cut, right? Now, if you get the Bitcoin and you just hold it and you do nothing with it, you're not selling it, you're not buying it, you're just holding it, there is no tax. There's no tax until you sell it at a profit, right? That's like any investment. You don't pay the tax until you realize that gain, until you sell it and you make that profit. Then, technically, you're supposed to report that to the government and give them their pound of flesh. Not confiscated, just closed down. Paul, how are they going to close it down? Bitcoin then would be purely a black economy unit of wealth. Well, whatever you want to call it. I mean, <laughs> if I think it has value and another guy thinks it has value and I can exchange that value with him, you can call that black market, you can call it whatever you want, but I mean, it's still value. Now, Bitcoin could theoretically get, go way down in value, you know, if they, if they ostracized it enough and, and, and started like shooting people that were caught with Bitcoin and started like taking just drastic measures then they could try to fight it and fight it and fight it, just like they did during Prohibition. You remember Prohibition, right? They were trying to fight people using, using liquor, but people still did. Um, they finally gave up. The government finally gave up, and they just made it legal. So I don't even think they're going to go through that with Bitcoin. I don't even think they're going to try making it illegal, because I, I think they know they would fail. So, um, but, you know, you... Say what you want. Well, time will tell if you're right or not. I mean, I'm not recommending that anybody put all their eggs in one basket. I'm not telling anybody to put all your money in Bitcoin because it's going to be unbelievable. I'm just telling you that I would not want to miss out on this. It's, it could be the biggest thing since electricity, since the Internet. It could be bigger than the Internet. Um, so I, I'm not going to miss out on it. You, you might, but I'm not going to. How's the gold stunner blue? Oh, that gold stunner is amazing. Um, the, these keys would be taken. <laughs> They're not physical keys. <laughs> Jeez. Oh, my God. Oh, people are... Some people are just totally morons. Oh, why don't you research how Bitcoin works, and we'll have another discussion another day, because obviously you have no clue how it works. <laughs> Jeez. Oh, gosh. Um, is anyone else worried that Bitcoin is just a pump-and-dump scheme? Well, it's been going on for 10 years. It's not a typical pump-and-dump. Obviously, I'm sure there have been times when the market has been manipulated and people have tried to pump it up and tried to sell off and tried to get it to crash so they could buy cheaper and, and people try to manipulate a market and it's a relatively small market, so it is manipulatable, if you will. It's only like $70 billion or something, the market cap. So that's why it's so volatile, right? <clears throat> but... Um, uh, again, there's enough people like me that just want to have it and want to hold it long term that that kind of 
counteracts some of the speculators. Because, in other words, if the speculators drive the value down enough, there are people like me that will step in and buy some more, right? Like my number right now, if it goes down to $1,250, I'm buying more. That's my number. That's my back up the truck and buy a bunch more Bitcoin is if it gets down to that number. And everybody has, not everybody, but a lot of Bitcoin people have numbers where they will buy more at. Like clearly there are people that are selling at 4,000 because it's been getting up to 4,000 and it's been kind of like staying there and, and kind of going a little below it and like kind of like just straddling along there. So clearly there is pressure there where there are people that are selling that are saying, okay, if it hits 4,000, I'm selling some Bitcoin, right? And so that's why it hasn't gone above 4,000 for a long time now, right? It went above for a brief period of time, not too long ago, but it, generally speaking, it's been below 4,000. So obviously there's selling pressure there, right? So it's like anything else. If the buying demand exceeds that selling pressure, then it will go up higher. Okay, um, so Brad Tech Webcast wants me to give out a shout. Brad, Te Brad Tech Webcast is, is it's techwebcast.info, techwebcast.info. Just put the link in the damn chat, Brad. You don't need to text message me to give you a shout out. Um, but anyway, um, sure, mar markets can be manipulated and all that. But again, there are a lot of us that are long-term fans and proponents of what Bitcoin are doing and that we will stick with it. We're hodlers of last resort. We'll hold on for dear life. That's what HODL stands for, uh, no matter what. So, so that's the deal there. Um, <clears throat> By making it illegal to trade in Bitcoin. Again, very difficult to do, Paul. Very difficult to enforce. Um, when, what would they mean by trading in Bitcoin? I mean, what's the definition of that? And how would they find out? I mean, it just... Uh, I mean, it could ha I guess it could happen. We'll see, Paul. I mean, it, here's the thing, Paul. Don't buy any. That's the neat thing about Bitcoin is it's totally voluntary. It's totally voluntary to buy it. It's totally voluntary to send it from one person to another. It's totally voluntary to give anybody a piece of it. I mean, it's, 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 a, it's a worldwide volunteer thing. Okay? That's the beauty of it. So it's probably good that we don't, if, if somebody's skeptical like you, that we don't have you in the space. We probably don't need you in the space, right? You're a skeptic. Stay with fiat currency. Stay with the current system. We're trying. We're trying something different. That's all. Um, are you getting daily wear, wear at work from it? He's wearing that stunner. Absolutely, he's wearing it. Um, uh, Gold is like watches. It's not an investment. It's a hedge against the collapse, collapse of paper money or, or catastrophe. Yeah, and you're probably better off having a bunch of seeds and, and guns and ammunition and stuff like that. It's going to be more valuable if the end times come. Um, do you think governments will allow free electronic fiat monies without their control. <laughs> Paul, <laughs> you're not getting it, man. <laughs> it's happening right now. It's been happening for 10 years. They are allowing it. Okay? And it would be very difficult for them to try to shut it down. That's why they're allowing it. Go listen to the Senate hearings on it and everything. They've already talked about it. Go, go listen. Um, but time will tell the tale. It's, it's an un, it's, it, we don't know. This is, uh, these are unknowns. We don't know what the government's really going to do when push comes to shove. We never know what the government's going to do half the time. So obviously it's a gamble, right? I mean, I think that's pretty obvious. It's not, it, it's, it, it's a high risk investment, if you want to use that term, for a whole lot of reasons, 
not the least of which is what the government may or may not do. But to say that they're just going to be able to shut it down like that, no big deal, I mean, means you don't know anything about Bitcoin. Um, paper monies are already being replaced. Well, paper money has pretty much been replaced. I mean, we're doing everything online, electronic. I mean, and, and the central banks and all can create new money out of thin air, no problem at all. I mean, they can, and half the money that's loaned out, it, it really doesn't even exist. It's just, they just loan it out, even though the money doesn't even exist. I mean, it's, there's a lot of funny, funny business going on in the financial system. Uh, that's why some of us like Bitcoin. Um, uh, hey, Brad. Um, Tepcoipass.info. Put HTTP colon slash slash so it will be a hot link, Brad. You should know that by now. You've been around the Internet for many years. Put the full website address and don't put a period after info. So it'll be a clickable hot link for them, for gosh sakes. Congrats on your 500th episode, Brad. When we're going to talk about only watches... Ah, uh, boy, I hear you. We talked about them some in the beginning. I'm almost done here. Paul, get Bitcoin. Thanks. Um, I've got plenty of guns, ammo, and training. All good there. Good. There you go. You're ready then. Understand, Paul, most financial planners recommend about 5% of gold in your diversified portfolio, but it's not mandatory. There you go. Planners used to recommend up to 20% of net worth in gold. What's the ugly watch? Just came in. <laughs> it's the one that Clivester bought. <laughs> and it and I guess it got me kicked out of the um kicked out of their uh, group. Their little group there was seven hundred members. Um <laughs> Oh, boy, the ugly watch. What's the ugly watch? I would pull up a picture over here, but let me, let me pull up a picture. <laughs> the ugly watch. <laughs> here we go. <laughs> there you go. There's a couple of them. <laughs> a couple of ugly watches there. That's a good way to wrap up the show. <laughs> Look at those watches. Can you imagine somebody actually paying money for those and then putting them on their wrist? Are you kidding me? <laughs> Jeez. Um, Craig, will the U.S. ever go back to money backed by real resources like gold bullion rather than fiat? Oh, I doubt it. No. No. No, 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 no. I don't think so. No, the only real limited currency I think that we've got a shot at is Bitcoin. It's the only one that's limited and that's robust and that's backed by a huge computer network and the best programmers in the business worldwide, uh, totally independent from any government, totally independent from any central bank. It's the best bet. If it doesn't succeed, then no, you're not going to have anything um, like that from the government. The government's not going to give you anything like that. They don't, they don't have any incentive to give you anything like that. They want to be able to control the money supply. They want to be able to ease it, tighten it, you know. They, they want to be able to control it the way they, they, they see fit. That's what governments do. So, um, let's see here. Clown watches. Thanks again for your time. Enjoy your dinner. I will. Grand Seiko is well known around the watch community. Let's show Grand Seiko here. Uh, Grand Seiko is is well known around the watch community. Do you think in the coming years they will sponsor mainstream events such as golf, like Rolex? No, I don't think so because um, they can't really produce that many watches because of so much hand work that goes into them and the quality of the watches. They can't mass produce like Rolex does. So I don't think they'll get into mass marketing like that. See, Rolex sells half a million watches a year or more, maybe 600,000 watches. Grand Seiko's lucky if they sell 50,000, you know, one-tenth that many. They probably, they probably only sell like 20 or 30,000. So it's a much lower production watch. So, no, I don't think they're going to um, do any heavy promotions like that. 
Um, wow, that AP is ugly. <laughs> yeah. Craig, for the price of an AP, could have had a Cal Travis. Yeah, he could have. Absolutely. Oh, I'm, I'm back on the sin bin. Okay. Uh, have a great one, Craig. Nice show. Blue says, all right, everybody. All right. I say we're going to wrap this puppy up. Let me get here to the, to the app here. Got to reconnect. Got to reconnect my app to the, to my encoder here so they can stop the live broadcast remember make sure to click that bell so you get notifications so you don't miss one of these epic shows <laughs> they kicked you out of fist because you didn't like the ap i have no idea i i have no idea are you sure i'm kicked out let me refresh the page and see how will i know if i'm kicked out let's see here Oh, sorry, this content isn't available right now. Yeah, I guess they kicked me out. Um, at least we were able to show it before I refreshed the page. Um, let's see here. If I go to... Um, Uh, let's see. Trying to find an old link to click on to see what, what it does. Anyway, it is what it is. Obviously, if somebody said I'm kicked out, I'm probably kicked out. So, um, Oh, boy. <laughs> Pretty funny. Um Oh, Sarah's showing something about her horse. Uh-oh, a problem with her horse. Um, darn. Okay, I'll have to find out what's going on with that. Problem with her horse. But anyway, um, that's kind of a strange group. I had a couple of little run-ins with a couple of people in there uh, it, anyway, and they're kind of kind of weird kind of a little bit messed up in the head some of them so um it's probably all for the best um uh let's see here uh, craig if if you're in on bitcoin i'd say you should keep up with what is going on with the telecom world and who's making the hardware the blockchain network is using it's not a it's not an issue it's not an issue um, that's a non issue I wouldn't worry about it um, show was both funny and informative have a great dinner our wag says cowgirls live Monday at 10 absolutely Thomas cowgirls live Monday at 10 o'clock yeah here's the thing you know there are two groups of people there are bitcoiners and non bitcoiners so everybody doesn't have to be in the bitcoin group it's a small group actually there's not that many people that own bitcoin and it's a very limited supply item so there aren't that many bitcoin to go around uh, there's only going to be about 15 million when all is said and done because there's 21 million going to be made and a bunch of them have been lost a bunch of people have lost access to their bitcoins millions of them so there's only probably going to be about 15, 16 million at, at the end of the day when all are produced. And so it's a very limited supply item. So everybody doesn't have to have Bitcoin and everybody can't even have Bitcoin, can't have a whole one. That's for sure. There just aren't enough to go around. So it is a very limited supply item. So obviously it's not for everybody. It's not meant to be for everybody. It's meant to be for those of us that want something of value that is safe that can't be confiscated, that uh, uh, is robust, uh, that is, has a network that cannot be hacked, has never been hacked. Uh, it, those of us that see the benefit in it, that's who it's for. It's not for all these what if people, oh, what if this happened, what if that, it's not for those people. 
It's for the people that believe in the concept, that believe in what the people that are behind it are doing and have done for the last 10 years, and that um, want to support that. That's really who it's for. So there you go. Everybody, thanks for watching. We're going to wrap this puppy up.